Hey you guys, it's Britt. Today we're here to go over Alicia Doherty's Christmas shopping extravaganza. This is pure flex culture, but there were a few things specifically that I wanted to talk about. I know that y'all are gonna have some feelings about this, but either way, if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so first things first, I wanna put a little disclaimer in the beginning of this video, just to say that if you're a parent and you're struggling this holiday season, or if you struggle year round, and holidays like birthdays, Easter, Christmas, if those are holidays that you celebrate and you struggle to be able to buy your kids presents, you're doing okay. You're doing fine. Kids don't need a thousand toys and 18 pairs of new shoes and, uh, you know, all of these like little games and little like trendy things that are usually popular. Like they'll, you know, hit their peak. I remember, I'll probably show my age, but when I was um, young, I don't remember what year it was, but I remember when Furby was like the hot toy. And I did get a Furby, but my dad also saved his money like it was his full-time job. And he also had to like really track it down and it was a whole mission. Um, but I get it, you know, there are those toys every Christmas that are really popular. And if this year there's a really popular toy and you wanna be able to get it for your kids, but you're just not able to allocate money towards this toy or this item. I will say what I've said forever on my channel. If your kids are safe, fed, you spend quality time with them, um, you know, you're helping them with their education. If you're doing all of the requirements that they need to be healthy, safe, and happy, you're doing okay. Don't beat yourself up about not being able to buy them a bunch of toys or the, the hottest shoes or whatever it is that they want. I know that the holidays can be really difficult for a lot of people and it might not even necessarily be not being able to buy your kids something. It might just be that you are not in the holiday spirit this year and maybe you experienced a loss over the last year. Maybe you're um, feeling really stressed out with trying to just manage your normal bills. Um, I understand, I get it and you're doing fine. Don't ever watch these family vloggers or people on Instagram that are buying all of this crap for their kids and think that they are doing a better job than you're doing because it's all materialistic crap. And most of these kids, when they get older, they're gonna look back and say, I really wish that I would have just had some really meaningful conversations with my parents and we could have spent time snuggled up on the couch watching movies and you know having hot chocolate or um, you know, hearing stories from when you were a kid, like I, I know for, for me personally, like hearing stories about my dad's childhood has always been really special for me. And I would rather be able to look back and have those memories than, you know, 1800 gifts under the Christmas tree. All of that stuff is just like gonna clog up your house and we already know kind of how that goes. You're doing fine. So don't beat yourself up. And I'm also sorry for, for anyone who is dealing with, um, you know, not having a good holiday season this year. I get it. <clears throat> I understand that the month of December can be really difficult for a lot of people. And if you're one of those people and you're just kind of struggling and you're ready for Christmas to be over and for the new year to start, I understand it. You're doing good. Keep doing your best. And we're going to be out of the holiday season here soon and we will be able to just proceed with life. So either way, let's get into the nonsensical BS that Alicia put in this vlog. First things first, I have, do have a question and this is uh, literally like I'm very curious if you're a family vlogger and you're posting shopping for your kids and what you're buying them, 
why are you gonna put it up on your channel before Christmas? Knowing damn well that your kids watch your vlogs. Knowing that your kids have eyes all over anything that you put on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, why are you sharing exactly what they're getting for Christmas? I get it, it's a tax write-off, all that nonsense, but it could also be posted after Christmas. Like you're giving away the, the secret, like the whole point of a gift, and tell me if I'm wrong, but it's for it to be a surprise. It's not to watch it on the you know YouTube channel and then see it under the tree on Christmas. It's it, it just makes no sense. Like I get it. Like she puts content over everything. We've seen that exhibited many times. But with this, you're literally taking the magic away from Christmas. You're taking the awe factor of unwrapping something and seeing what's in the box. Because again, content is over everything in the Doherty household. So next she starts out her shopping spree at Dick's Sporting Goods and she buys the kids a bunch of stuff that they already have, like football gloves. This woman will literally buy anything. It doesn't matter if they have it at home. If she's in a store and she has that, like she is the worst impulse shopper that I've ever seen. If it's got her attention, it's going in the cart. It doesn't matter if she has 50 at home, she's still gonna buy it. The one thing I really didn't like is when she was checking out at Dick's, the cashier made a very loud announcement as to what her total was. Put the stuff in the car and head into the mall. All right, so your total for everything is $681 even. Okay, let's go put these in the van. Keep shopping. And obviously I'll include a clip for you guys. But number one, I don't know about you guys, I've done a fair amount of shopping in my lifetime and I've never had a cashier loudly announce what my total is. So I almost wonder, like did she ask the cashier to do that? And I know that that's kind of like a weird assumption to make but I've literally never checked out and had the cashiers say so loudly what my total is. You know, they'll say your total, but this guy was so loud and maybe that was just like his, uh, maybe that was just the way that he talks, but it was a very loud, very abrupt, and I, I thought it was kind of weird. Next, she goes to her local mall, and this is where the flex culture really unfolded. Those jewelry kiosks in the mall, they have like chains, earrings. You can usually get like your ears pierced there. Fun fact, I actually got my cartilage pierced years ago at one of those. And that's a story that I told you guys a while ago where I passed out afterwards. I passed out on the escalator and, um, you know, thank God my mom was with me or else I could have literally busted my head open. But um, yeah, that's where, where that happened. And you should never, ever, ever pierce your ears, especially any of the cartilage with a, a piercing. It should always be done with a needle, go to a piercing place, do it the right way. Um, the, the trauma that the piercing will inflict on your ear is super scary and it shouldn't be used. And that's just my opinion based off the research that I've done in recent years. So she goes ahead and buys these chains for her a uh, kinship boy and her oldest boy. The thing that I find really interesting is Alicia is very cheap with some stuff and she'll overspend on other stuff. And I'll give you guys an example. So she goes to this kiosk and buys these chains that, you know, are, are not pricey at all. Okay, so silver for um, gold for day. Um, my 16 year old son wants a silver chain. My 13 year old son wants a gold chain. What length do like men usually get? So, I mean, they like the bigger ones, so yeah. Then she goes over to this shoe store and is looking at Jordans. And the Jordans range from about $425 to $600, depending on, you know, what color and so on and so forth. It's 13. 13 what? Men's. 
Nah, too big. Yeah, I think His feet are too a, big. Like he race. might fit a 12. Well, no, I'm saying the pink one. Oh, the pinks are women's. I think that's a women's one. Mm. So, okay. And then Air Jordan 4 Retro's Midnight Navy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go start it. I have those. So okay. He's a 10 and a half. Let's see if I have a 13 like in this one. Um, looks like I do have a 13. Those are 550, if not more. I gotta double check. Okay. These ones, 10 and a half, might be around between 4 400 and 425. Okay. And then. And then so you're gonna spend, let's just be fair and say, $500 on shoes for them. But five minutes earlier, you bought really cheap jewelry. There are certain things in life, in my opinion, that are worth investing in. And I would rather have a $5 pair of shoes and, a, you know, a chain that I actually paid for and I know that it's good quality then have it the other way around I don't want a $90 chain and $600 pair of shoes and I know that that's a personal opinion but when you're thinking about the wear and tear that chain could be something that the child has for the rest of their life she has the money to do so so why not go to a proper jewelry store and actually buy something that is going to be a keepsake for them for the rest of their life. So I thought that was really funny, just like the comparison. You're so quick to say, oh, okay, well, yeah, $600 shoes, no problem. Those shoes are going to be worn down, worn out, and then thrown in the trash. The chain, again, could be something worn for the rest of that child's life if it's good quality. Now she makes her way over to the Apple store and I saw, it was yesterday, the day before, I saw her make a TikTok, and I'll throw it right here, of her flexing at the Apple store, walking out with all of these bags. Well, in this vlog, we got a little more context as to what's in the bag. She bought 12 iPads and 12 uh, like keyboard folios, so it's kind of like a case, but it's also a keyboard. Most people that have iPads use those because it makes typing a lot easier and it's also a case. So she goes ahead and buy, she went ahead and bought those and she drives around to the back of the Apple store to actually pick them up so that she's not walking through the mall with all of these Apple bags. Again, we're coming out of Black Friday where she bought all of the kids these new phones. So these kids are getting new phones, new iPads, all of the toys that you could ever um, imagine and these are children that also have been taught that everything is replaceable. So it's one thing if you're gonna, you know, buy this kind of stuff and your, your kid actually understands that like, look, this took me a lot to be able to buy, so you better treat it right. Her kids don't have that instilled in them, so if they break their iPads or break their phone within a week of having it because they get upset and throw it across the room or they take it outside, throw it on the driveway, they don't care about their possessions because Alicia has showed them, I'm going to buy anything under the sun that you want. And if you break it, I'll buy you a new one tomorrow. Just like when the uh, twins broke the TV, they had a new one in their house literally the same day. I also think it's really interesting that her youngest child is getting an iPad and a phone. What toddler needs an iPad and a phone? Usually and this is only off my own experience, friends of mine that have kids, they, they'll give their child like their old iPad. When they upgrade, they'll, you know, pass down the iPad so it's not just garbage. I, I don't know, like, what do you guys think about such a young child having not only a phone, but also an iPad? I think the phone is way more problematic, but she also bought the iPad. Now she made her way over to Target and she bought some Apple gift cards. And my ears kind of perked up when she said this because I was thinking, why do they need Apple gift cards? Let's hear what she has to say. And she made it a point to say that their credit card is not linked to the iPads for the kids or their phones. But I wanted to get some Apple gift cards for the kids. Um, oh, you know what I should do is get I'll get the 50s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I put these in their stockings, 11, 12. I'm thinking I should get one for their iPad as well. So we don't link our credit card to any of their devices because they just would like spend and spend and spend not realizing it. So we only link the Apple cards. So then when they run out of money, like they can't buy anything else. So I'm actually going to get these so that at least on each of their devices they have the ability to buy, buy like some apps right away 
Okay, that just made us do four transactions, I think, four. for the gift cards. I think we ended up doing like six transactions. I'm gonna have to look at the receipts when we get home. Because if it was, then they would just buy, buy, buy and spend all day long. So I understand that part of it. Um, but because you're giving them gift cards with a monetary value, she did like $50 gift cards. How do you know what they're buying? That's always my question. It's not so much like, oh, is your credit card linked or is it a different credit card? The fact that they have open access to the app store to buy things and download apps is what bothers me. These kids, in my opinion, should not be able to download apps and talk to other people on the internet. These kids should be protected. They shouldn't be able to um, receive messages from weirdos online. Whether or not the weirdo knows that it's, it's a Doherty child, that doesn't really matter. It's just the fact of your kid has access to talk to people on the internet. And you, as a parent, gave them the access to be able to do all of this. So it is your responsibility. You need to take accountability if something bad happens and if these kids are talking to bad people online. It's Alicia's fault. She also decided to address her haters for one second, and I think it was for all the wrong reasons. She says how haters will give her you know, negative feedback about her buying her kids crafts and things like hula hoops. Also, yes, I buy my teenagers things like crafts and hula hoops and some of that stuff that I'm buying for the little kids um, because you know what? I know I get like hate for it. Why are you buying a teenager a hula hoop? I'm sorry, but hula hoops are fun for any age. I'm 42 and I'm still gonna try out a hula hoop, okay? Now, I don't know about you guys, I have not heard anyone say kids at a certain age should not be receiving crafts or hula hoops. It's so funny to me when YouTubers decide to quote, address the haters, and they choose to address something that literally nobody is talking about. With Alicia, the haters are talking about her overspending, her food waste, her uh, exploiting her children, her oversharing, the security issues, the uh, posting the school bus, filming at the school, filming football practice. There is a laundry list of things that people are upset at Alicia over, and she decided to talk about damn crafts and hula hoops. No, that's not the message. That was never it. It's not it now, and good luck trying to justify it. Now, when she gets home, she tells the kinship kid to help her bring in the bags and quote, don't peek. Do you actually think that a child is going to help carry in bags and not peek? But even if he didn't peek, he can watch the YouTube video today, right now, and see exactly what she bought. Once she was at home and settled, she also did an Amazon haul and she did buy a gaming computer for $1,300 for one of her adopted kids. And this I'm not super mad at because I think that this is also a child who is treated differently. So if he wanted a gaming com computer and that's what she got for him, then, you know, by all means, I also hope that he's not talking to weirdos online, but I know nothing about gaming. So I don't know if those two necessarily cross paths as easy as like social media platforms. So if you know something about gaming, like sound off down below, but I did wanna mention it, um, you know, good for him. If that's what he wants and it, that's what he got, that's fantastic. Um, but again, it's not a surprise because it was in the blog. She also bought these $12 necklaces with like Bible scriptures. I just thought that was really weird. Like who's gonna wear a $12 necklace? Do you want your child's neck to turn green? Do you want them to just, wear it for an hour and then have to get rid of it. It seems like a complete waste of money, but the uh, other thing that I noticed that she bought are new rollerblades. And the one thing that I've never gotten on Alicia for is buying her children things that they can use outside. I would rather see rollerblades and hula hoops and the football gear and a new basketball than the nonsensical BS that she's buying, like overpriced Jordans, iPads, iPhones, um, 
video games. Like if I was going to pick one over the other, it's always better to allow these kids to play outside. Now the double-edged sword that she has created is that her kids are not completely safe playing outside because of her oversharing and people knowing where she lives, they're not able to play outside like normal kids would play outside. Um, and again, that's her fault, 100% her fault. So I, I like the idea of the kids playing outside, but I also realize that because of her nonsense, they're also not safe playing outside and that sucks. Last thing I wanted to mention in this video, and then I will close it out. I wanted this to be like really quick and concise because I'm not going <clears> to <throat> keep y'all here for an hour and a half because I'm giving you the cliff, no cliff notes. Uh, the last thing is this woman makes a hot chocolate with water. And I know that that's petty. I know it's dumb. Making a hot chocolate with water is one of my icks. Like unless that's all that you have, then that's one thing. You know, I've been places where it's like, oh, well, you know, I can't get milk, so I will use water. But like she was literally in her house. She wanted to do this like hot cocoa bar with all this sugary crap on the char charcuterie board. And then she makes a hot chocolate with water. Um, for me, that's an offense, but maybe I'm just being petty. So either way, um, and by the way, I know that dietary restrictions also play part in this, but I don't think that her kids are all allergic to almond milk because she buys it like it's her full-time job. Either way, that's going to be it for now. I uh, can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about this. Holy flex culture. Don't ever compare yourself to Alicia Doherty and this nonsense that she's doing because down the road, these kids are not going to appreciate all of this crap that she bought, but they will zoom into all of the problematic things that she was doing online and they might un end up realizing, you know, hey, she totally overshared and that might be a conversation that they need to have with her once they are out of the house. I just have a really bad feeling about all of this, but we're going to continue to follow it. So for now, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.